Hello and welcome to another exciting Photoshop quick tip. This is John Flanagan with Comtech in Oklahoma City. Let's jump right in. Today we're going to do a little photo editing. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at uh, minimizing wrinkles. There's a million different ways to do just about anything in Photoshop, so we'll, we'll just look at a couple. And, uh, okay, so we're going to go over here your toolbar. Use the spot healing brush tool. And, um, you know, you're probably familiar with it. If you hit J on the keyboard to toggle between it, you can resize your brush by holding down Control and Option and dragging up and down to soften and right and left to, to enlarge and shrink. And you just brush across the uh, wrinkle and there it goes. Sometimes the results can be a little extreme, so you may want to fade them. That's a uh, Shift Command F, it'll bring up the fade properties for the last uh, executed move. And you can slide that around until you, you think it looks more realistic. See, that one looks very plastic surgery there, so we're going to fade that back. There we go. Just a little more natural. Zero, and yeah, you see how the, the fade command works. I just love that fade command. It, it's, uh, it became my favorite as soon as I started using it. Can't remember when it came out. It's been a while. Another great way to, to go is to use the patch tool. Um, I, I prefer it. Some people, you know, maybe have other ways, but it's really simple. You just lasso an area of wrinkles that you want to uh, minimize or eliminate. And then you drag the uh, selection to a area of clear skin. And it's going to sample the texture from the area that you're targeting from. Uh, but retain the highlight and shadow values of, of, of the source area. So it's really nice. Uh, here again, you want to fade that just to keep it a little realistic. And then that's pretty much it. You just proceed through all the wrinkles, you know. There's a nice little area there. We'll get it off her cheek. Uh, we'll see what else can we do. Crow's feet. Gone. There they go. And, yep, more crow's feet. We'll just move through some of these uh, areas real quick and try to uh, try to get her a little uh, euthanized uh, in the graphic design sense. As long as you've got a clear area of skin, you know, it, you can sample from just about anywhere. Very good. You don't want to sample from areas that are not skin out there. It's, you know, it's going to remove all the skin texture. It's going to look very artificial. So, you know, the point to this kind of thing isn't to, to change, you know, make them younger. It's, it's just to put them in their best light. You know, we're not, we're not trying to pull like a, you know, magazine cover type thing. These are real people. We, we, we don't want the, we just want to flatter them put them in their best light, not necessarily change the way they really look. Okay, um, you see here's a before and a little after, so you, you can see there's a lot of, a lot of work to do on her neck here. And I'm, you know, I'm going to do something a little different with that. And it, it get, you, this isn't something you'd want to use on the face where, where there's lots of features, but in areas like necks, I think it's a little more forgiving. You can go a little a little different approach. So I'm going to lasso that and feather it. And then use some, uh, maybe a blur or median. We'll use median. And we'll just knock that out. And... Uh, thing you do is you, you do lose whatever texture was in the photograph whatever skin texture her neck's already pretty blurry in the photo but it just doesn't it doesn't look real anymore so uh, you can go into the filter gallery and I've got it set for sandstone here and it's a little extreme but you know once we once we commit that we'll go and fade it back out until it's somewhat you know more you know, realistic and leave all the settings as they are. And fade it. That's where fade lives up in the edit menu if you don't want to use the keystroke. And just take it down until it's not distracting. You, you know. This photograph's not going to be 
viewed in its final output. It's not going to be viewed at this close of a level, so it's got a little bit of flexibility. Oh, oh goodness sakes. All right, there we go. We're just going to lasso this whole area of her neck and just get it all done here real quick. You guys can do a little better job of selecting um, this as a tutorial. You know, obviously, some of you are going to want to use the pen or whatever. Feather that out. You don't want to have like a really sharp line between where you've. No, median. Yeah, it looks almost painterly, so. A little filter gallery will, will bring that back. Um, Alright, well, there you go. Um, you know, there's another technique. Uh, if you really, really have to go far with the photograph and it starts to to look significantly uh, photoshopped there's a uh, one of my go-to places is the uh, filter gallery and I switch it to the grain and I use enlarged grain and it's really great for masking a bunch of hackish uh, photoshop edits so you can dial in the intensity and you know the more edits you do the more maybe grain you need to hide them but we're just going to put a little natural photographic grain back in it with it. Uh, okay, uh, I want to fade that. Uh, by default, the grain filter puts a lot of color, almost like noise, in the picture. So fade that and set it to uh, luminosity. It's it's down there. Yeah, luminosity, and that just makes it black and white grain. So the regular picture colors are come through. Oh, there's before. Um, okay, this is an interesting thing. It's more of a point of ethics the got this uh this facial feature on her that is distinctive in this case let's say and you know you have the power with photoshop to completely remove it but that's really not a good idea distinctive facial features and characteristics that you may consider flaws well it's not your job to to make that decision um your job is to make a flattering image for the client and you know i mean that, that might hurt her feelings you know I mean, she she knows what she looks like, so you don't want to make edits that completely alter the way somebody really looks. Uh, that's no way to make friends. So in this case, you probably just if you do anything to it, you probably just want to do a little little subtle work on it. So we'll fade that back and and yeah. So that's kind of the the rule there. You know, it's our job to make people look good. And, you know, unless you've got a boss and you're doing a magazine cover or something, that might be different. But for day in and day out photo retouching, it's best to uh, try to preserve the natural feature. So there's a little before, a little after. Took a few years off. She's not going to feel like her real face is ugly when she sees it. It's going to feel flattering to her. So appreciate you guys. Uh, have fun retouching photos, and uh, we'll see you next time.